All right. Welcome to the show. First things first, if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, watching on YouTube, please subscribe, like, comment all that good stuff. We appreciate all the love and support. Today, I'm going to introduce a very special guest. He is the CEO of Precision Medical Products. He started this business out of his own garage and is now well over a $100 million company. Uh, Another fun fact about this guest, he built the largest residential pool ever in California He pretty much went to Hawaii, was at a resort. He's like, yeah, I want this in my backyard in California. So without further ado, Jeremy Perkins, CEO, Precision Medical Products. Thank you for taking the time to come to the show and uh, what a ride it's been for you, right? Can you explain what it's been like to have a company in your garage to building a uh, multi-million dollar pool in your backyard? Yeah, so I started Precision Medical Products. It was actually about 13 years ago. So I actually started it because the company I was with at the time was like, I was having a lot of frustrations with them. They, they kept lowering commissions for sales reps and stuff. So I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it myself. So in the beginning, it was just, it was real small. Like I, it was just me, you know, the first month. And then I hired like a buddy month two. And then we just had a couple of friends join. I, I, I never thought like today we're in, oh man, we're in 44 states. Uh, we, we had another state last month. So yeah, 44 states about 260 employees. And, um, well, we did about 60 million last year and we actually we're, we're cutting back this year, kind of, we can talk about that, but just being strategic with some basically making things more profitable. So we'll finish this year about 45, 50 million. That's the high level of, of what we did. Probably the most thing I'm proud of though, instead of being like, you know, there's, there's a lot of companies out there, but one of the, one of the things we really take a lot of pride in, we have, we have 22 patents, 22 medical device patents. We've created and innovated a lot of great technology the last five years that helped save lives. And it really you know, helps patients rehab and get back to health quicker. So our main product uh, prevents blood clots. And I don't know if you guys, do you guys know much about blood clots? I don't know. A little bit. Yeah, I, I feel it's uh, one of those things that you don't really know until it's too late, right? Like that's that's the problem. I think I, I remember uh, reading about your company and that was the big thing is you have a device that can you know stop that or basically detect it before it's too late you get a blood clot to the brain it's you're done you know so yeah tell us about that that's pretty interesting yes that's kind of been our our company in the last 13 years is we either distribute other people's products or we do our own product so there's a couple core products we have that are are that are ours and one of those is is the blood clot prevention It's, it's kind of been my I think as an entrepreneur, like when you start your company, you just need to start do anything. Like we did, we did a lot of me too products in the beginning and just try to have a great service. And, you know, just, we didn't have much money. So we started from scratch with, you know, other people's stuff, but probably about, uh, you know, after about five years of building the company bigger and bigger, we realized that, you know, the DVT prevention, it's the number two way people die in hospitals. More people die each year. It's about 200,000 people die each year. It's more than highway fatalities, breast cancer, AIDS, something else like combined. The numbers are a lot higher. And the crazy thing is <laughs> with uh, with everything happened with COVID, the, the blood clot deaths are going up and up. And I'm not, I'm not getting into politics or anything. <laughs> <laughs> What's that can of worms there that you just opened up? I didn't notice. Yeah, I, got- I stay out of that, man. I got uh, 260 employees there. You, you end up pissing off people either way. So Regardless of that, there is more blood clots and, you know, however that happens, <laughs> but uh, there's been been more blood clots and our whole goal and vision with the company, our main device goes home with patients. So about 10 years ago, this whole thing that what you alluded to, Brandon, it's called a silent killer. So nobody knows about it until you have like, oh, my uncle just died from a blood clot. Like I didn't even know what it was. And they, they, they dive into it and it happens to old people and young people want to, um, one of the people we, we've sponsored the last, I think, six years now was a um, high school runner out of Rockland High School, right, where, where we're all from. She died at age 16 um, from a blood clot. So she was on, for medication, she was on birth control at a young age cause, for some other issues. And she developed a clot and, and, and passed away at age 16. So just it's, it's pretty crazy, like, the, how it's, there's not a lot of education out there on it. So that's, that is our purpose. Um, I don't want to go long-winded on it. But that's 
that's kind of what we wake up every day is like, how do we save lives and prevent blood clots? Our device goes home with patients and it, they, they wear it in the house. So yeah, that, that hit home hits home for me. I had uh, one of my best friends in college. He had knee surgery and uh, he was just sitting out by his truck, um, got a blood clot to the brain, fell down, hit his head, coma and passed away. So that definitely hits home for me. How, how like, so someone like uh, people like us, right? Where would we, how would we even get that started? Like, right. Like what's the, do we ask our provider or is there a specific product that you guys recommend that you make that obviously you, you feel works the best or how would an average guy get checked for something like that? I mean, as much as I like to push our product, like <laughs> it, it helps and stuff, but the reality is there's like three ways people can get blood clots, right? It's um, one of them is having surgery. So if you, if you just have like a recent surgery, it, it's called vessel wall damage. So it's because there's an incision that you're, you're more likely to have a clot occur. So that's, that's one way. And that's what our device does. It goes home with the patient. You wear it for, you wear it from seven days to 30 days. And just when you're laying there, it, it squeezes your calves and, and pumps blood. It like mimics what you do by walking. Right. Which is number two, you know, way people, you know, get blood clots is just not, they call it non-ambulatory. So it's like, you're not moving, but that might not be from surgery. That might be from, I don't know, you just broke your foot or, I mean, they're like obese people, for example, a lot of them just like don't move much in general, you know, or, or ex another big example of, of way people got them is like long plane flights. You'll get, you'll go on like a, a plane flight internationally and you're, you're on a plane for 12 hours, 14 hours, and you're sitting there the whole time. So you don't want, you don't want your body like not, move, you know, not ambulating. So like little things, like if you're on a plane, like get up every three, two, three hours, just move around, walk, go to the bathroom, come back, just walking alone gets the blood moving. And that's, and that's what prevents the clot. So it, it's things like that. There's also like certain medications like birth control and other things that, that can make you more high at risk. You could be, there's something called thrombolytic factor five. So you you'd be genetically more disposed to, or more likely to get a blood clot. So there's little things like that, but the, at the end of the day, it really comes down to education. The main thing that like save your life is if, if you ever feel your calf swollen a little bit or red, or, you know, it's tender to the touch, you, you can feel a little, little swelling. It feels different. Go get checked out immediately. Like they can put a Doppler on you. If you catch a blood clot right away, you're fine. Like they'll put you on a blood thinner. You'll be good to go. I think it's like 99% survival rate at that point all right is there a at home kit or anything like that that or do you have to go through your provider no because you're going to go in a urgent care or like an emergency room and get a doppler done they're going to they're going to use one of the actual dopplers and and see if there's a clot in there but the, the problem is like and, and i'm the kind of same way I, I i'm the worst person on this like i only go to the doctor once a year in all reality i probably go once every three years i i don't i i feel like i i work out i'm healthy like i don't my body can fight things. It's, it's kind of like probably the attitude a lot of people have. So it's one of those things where you just got to know that that particular thing, like a, a, your calf swollen, because that's where a lot of blood clots occurs in your calf and it moves up your leg and, and, and your lungs. You get a pulmonary embolism and you die. Like it's, it's the, the silent killer is crazy. So it, that's, that's my whole thing. Like just education. If you ever um, experience that, then, you know, one of our sales reps, do you know Corey Fretland at all? He's in, out of Rockland. No, uh, I don't know him. His neighbor was, he was out walk, walking one day and ran, walked by his neighbor. His neighbor's like, oh man, I've been sick, laying down, like my calf hurts, it's swollen. He's like, you got to get checked right away. He's like, that's what I do for a living. And, Co and Corey told me about it in the beginning. And he's like, I thought I was just paranoid because this is like, well, we, we live in this every day and hear bad stories, you know? But the guy went in and had a blood clot and was actually moving up his leg. They caught it. And they're like, you would have been dead within four, within four or five days if, 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 if he wouldn't have told you about that. So it's like. Yeah, I, I had no idea. I don't know. Like now I'm, I'm like, I'm stretching my calf right now. I'm like, man, I'm going to be checking out my calf every morning. Yeah, no, this this definitely hits close to home for me. My sister just recently had a surgery and she's been, you know, laid up in bed for a few days and really can't move much. You know, it's a it's a hip uh, replacement type thing. So, I mean, she's kind of stuck. She can't do much. Um, and that seems sort of like what your goal was here, right? Was basically to help people that just had, you know, surgeries and stuff. Cause that happens all the time where people actually die after the surgery or get complications from things after the fact. So was that your main goal was basically, you know, I'm worried about people after the fact, or was there other things that kind of led to, uh, this discovery and this product? I, I tell every entrepreneur, cause I'm, I'm passionate about entrepreneurship. 
Like you just got to go out there and start a company. Like in the beginning, we were doing cold therapy for athletes and people because like cold therapy reduces swelling. It helps with pain relief. There's a big epidemic right now with, with pain meds. You, you guys probably hear about it. It's like it's, people are addicted to pain meds and it, it's crazy the, the negative reper, repercussions from that. So cold therapy is like an all natural alternative to that. Like these machines hook up and, and just and help you. So that's when our company very first started, which is cold therapy. But the same surgeons we were working with were like, what can you do with these blood clots? Like we, this is, and then we started researching it. We found products that, that would work. We started our, our whole, uh, probably our one rate limiting issue in our company is we, we have to build insurance companies. So at the end of the day, we, we, we could probably do a lot more business than we do now. It's just insurance companies won't pay for stuff. So we're like, I have 86 people in our company. I mean, you look at the quick numbers, about one fourth of all people we have in our company work solely in the billing department to get stuff built out. Like we just, it, it's, we fight with insurance companies all day and they don't want to pay for stuff. So the, 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 not too long winded on it. That's, that's kind of what happened. Like we were doing cold therapy, we we're doing bracing other products. And then you just listen to your customers and they're like, you know, the, the surgeons we work with are our customers. And they said, you know, what can you do for this particular um, device? And, and, and for people listening, I would just say, cause this is like what I'm really passionate. I'm, I'm like, I don't even know. It's probably too long. I'm three or four years into writing a book and I got ADD. So I'll, I'll write like a chapter then I won't write anything for like three months. I'll write a chapter and then I'll go redo the chapter. I don't know. It's, who knows if this thing will ever get published, but if it does, it'll be good. For, it'll be pretty good. because I put a lot of time into it. And one, one of the chapters on there is like, is, you know, around the principle of just getting started. Like it doesn't matter what you do. Like I, I thought about starting a business for like five years. I'm like, what do I do this? Or should I do that? Or, and, and what I found like looking back like 20 years later, I should have just started something. And, and Brady, I know you're successful in, in your in your business. Uh, Tim, I don't, I, don't, I don't really know your background, but well, I, but Brady, you probably you could probably relate, right? Like when you started your company, you probably started with some product, that, whether it was good or not, who knows? But then you you evolve like month by month, quarter by quarter, and you, you bring on new stuff. So that's that's what I really encourage people to do. There's so many people I talk to. They're like, hey, I want to start a company. What do you, do you think about this idea? I'm like just just freaking do it. Like. Even if your idea sucks and you start to get going, you talk to other people, you might pivot and you might change your company right away to something else. But the fact that you're, the ship has left the harbor and you're out there doing something, that's what, that's what will like, you know, create a great company one day. A lot, a lot of really, really good companies look totally different 10 years later than when they first started. And that's my big encouragement to everybody is like, just, just try something because like entrepreneurship is really fun. And you can make a big difference. You, you could change the world. You could, you could save lives. You know, you could do whatever. You, you know, you could. I, I like Elon's whole thing. I moved to Austin, Texas, so I, I get I get more. You know, I get, I get more Elon propaganda here in Austin. But it's it is inspiring to hear these entrepreneurs that are that are trying to do things that it really change the world, and it, and it motivates me. So I don't know. I, I I'm glad I started my company. It's something I really really recommend. To, if, if people are passionate and, and want to you know do things. Just start try a company and just and get it going. So, yeah, that's what I tell everyone. That's that's you're right on a right on spot. That for there, gosh, it's it's an early morning. That didn't even make sense. Is that a different? No, there language? was no words. <laughs> you just need to stop a little. But uh, yeah, I, I tell everyone. They're like, well, because you hear you go to barbecues, you have, you're hanging out with your friends. Oh, I want to start this, but in reality, they don't do it. No one. Ninety nine percent of those conversations, they never pull the trigger. And what I tell everyone is just do it. Like, is everyone's like, well, this is going to happen or this has been done before or they have every excuse in the book not to do it, but you just got to do it and you'll figure it out. You know, that's the best advice. So everyone listening out there, this guy's, uh, you know, a hundred million dollar company plus, I don't even know what it's valued at now, probably way, way more than that, but that's the best advice anyone can give an entrepreneur is do it like quit talking about it quit telling your buddies about it writing these big business plans business plans are great but you got to do it hey, you, you know what's funny i, I never talked about this because i got like crazy add right like my my add is insane so when i first started my company i tried to do a business plan but then it like kept changing every week it's almost like the, the i was talking about, about the book i was like the first three years of the company, so I started my garage and started hiring people and we was like sales, 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 great customer service. Well, at year three, we got number one fastest growing company in all of Sacramento. Okay. So this is 30, and this isn't Sacramento. It's like a hundred mile radius of Sacramento of any company in that region. 
There's 3,500 companies at the time that were competing. And we got number one. And then I didn't know what I was doing. Like, it was my first company, never a CEO. No, I tried to get funding. Nobody would give me money. They're like, why would we trust you? So it's all like I had no advantages, like nothing in my favor. No private equity, no venture capital, self funded, out of the garage. We didn't even know the products. I was like, I just want to start a company and I want to provide products. So we'll try a bunch of stuff. I, we tried everything those first six, 12 months, right? We, we did not know where, I get people, I, I wish there was back, I wish we would have documented this because people would have been like, oh my gosh, I can do way better than this guy. Like it's, it, it was not like anything, it wasn't talent or anything special, but we tried really hard, worked really hard and ha had good attitudes, right? So the, the point of it, after three years, we get number one fastest growing company in Sacramento at 3,500. Nobody grew faster than us. Now that's a, that's, they do it on a two year run rate. Like, so year one, we were small and then we had the next two years, we grew a lot. So we got number one. The, the crazy thing, uh, they did this tracking for like 70 years in a SAC Business Journal. We hit it again the next year, number one out of 3,500. To hit it back to back is almost impossible because if you grow a ton, it's so hard to grow a ton again because you're you're already like, you're already, it's all percentage growth. So I already, I already have to grow a really high number. And uh, we, we did it, we did it back to back. And, and the point on it, like, at the end of the day, it was it was just like came down like passion, hunger, intensity, and just really like you know putting our heads down, having fun, and 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 just trying hard. And it's like it can business can be really really fun. Like for me, I was never a good athlete. I was super competitive, and I always wanted to be a good athlete, but I wasn't the tallest kid in the basketball court. I couldn't hit the farthest on the baseball field, but. I was freaking competitive and I, I sit there at night in business and be like, dude, how am I going to take down my competitor? And I, I would just, I couldn't go to sleep. Be like, I'm going to do this. How can I get this account over here? What procs can we do? How can we, like, there's all these things in my head that just keep spinning. And so the, I mean, it sounds simple, right? People always ask you, people probably ask you, Brandon, I'm like, Hey, how'd you get your company? How'd you grow it? How'd you scale it? And there's not like a, you're not going to be sitting there at a barbecue and be like, yeah, let me answer your question in two minutes. In this next two minutes, I'm going to tell you the key that's going to make you a multimillionaire. It's not going to happen, right? So that was the principle why I want to write this book because I, I think there is a lot of principles that if you apply, you know, maybe a hundred different principles to your life that you you, you, you probably can apply all those hundred and, and become a millionaire. But the first step of any is just go out there and freaking start your company because if you don't, you can have all the knowledge in the world and all those business plans and it doesn't matter. And so that, that my long winded answer year, year four, after getting sacked, number one, number one fast growing company in Sacramento, I didn't even have a business plan. It was, we sat there and we took our meetings, but it wasn't a business plan. We're, like, we're taking this month to month, baby. Hey, cause you got to pivot every month, every quarter, there's something new. There's, you know, it's hard to plan for anything, right? Like there's certain things, obviously you have to put procedures in place, but it's kind of as you go, right? Like, like, okay, here's another problem. Let's figure it out, you know, each day. And uh, I love manufacturing. That's the coolest thing when you make a new product. I've been in the supplement industry. Now I'm in CBD. And uh, it, it's it's fun. You get to create a product. And then the best part is you get to sell it and make money off something you created. Where was your first product? Where did you source it? Did you overseas? Did you keep it in the States? Or One disclaimer that answer your question. I, I'm a huge believer in business plans. I don't want to tell you to be like, oh, Jeremy never used business plan. And so I, if you fast forward 13 years later, we have a whole corporate annual operating plan that our board meets on quarterly. We follow budget. Like we, we freaking nail that annual operating plan. And we, we do follow business plan really, really closely now. I mean, each division has business plans. Like my, my point on it's like there, and that's one of the other things I probably talk about, like there's levels of business. There's creating a company in your garage and flying by the seat of your pants, right? And you probably don't need an elaborate business plan. But then there's also having like, 240 employees, a $10 million line of credit. Like you, we have to have plans at that level, you know? So, so those are, those are different, but yeah. So back to your question in the, in the very beginning, um, in medical device, I would just go to trade shows and meet, uh, other manufacturers and some of you be launching a product and they need the distribution. I'm like, Hey, I got, I got a few sales reps in Northern California. We'd love to, we'd love to represent your, your product in the very beginning. They're like, Hey, we'll just give you just Sacramento. And then we were in Northern California and then we started doing all of, Cal all of California. And it was after about, I don't know, two, three years. And we started expanding state by state. And then after that, it's like just copy paste, right? It's like, I don't know, it, it wasn't, that's a great thing about business too. It's like, there's so many books, like one of the books scaling up, 
or, or there's a book called E-Myth, and it's just about how, how you create businesses, make them profitable, and then it's just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And it's like, look at Chick-fil-A, right? Like, I know some people that own uh, Chick-fil-A restaurants, but that, that's a franchise that's already been laid out. Like, if you start